from around the globe. It's the Cube with digital coverage of OutSystems Next Step 2020, brought to you by OutSystems. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of OutSystems Next Step 2020. And we love when we get to be able to talk to the practitioners when we come to these events, and happy to welcome to the program first time guest, Bruce Buttles. He is the Digital Channels Director at Humana, gave a presentation uh, this year, also last year at the physical event. Bruce, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, great to have you on theCUBE. Hey, Stu, thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, so uh, Bruce, Humana, a, a company that you know, most people probably are familiar, uh, you know, healthcare, of course, super important uh, in, in general and even more so in 2020. But if you could just set up for us a, a little bit, uh, how should we think of Humana these days, your role inside the organization, uh, and then we'll get into the discussion from there. Yeah, it's a great point, you know, because Humana is and has been going through a pretty significant transformation. And one of the big reasons why I joined Humana about two and a half years ago was this uh, goal to go from just an insurance company to really a full service healthcare company. So to now, now we're really bridging the, the gateway where we're almost half of our staff are caregivers, our doctors and nurses and uh, clinicians, and the other half of us kind of run the business. Uh, so my role is digital channels, as you would expect, uh, leading up efforts across Humana.com, our mobile apps, uh, Go365 and other you know, fitness and wellness apps, as well as pharmacy business. So uh, good question. Uh, awesome, Bruce, I, I tell you, one of the, my favorite conversations over the last few years has been that discussion. You know, digital transformation, it was a buzzword, it gets a little bit overused, but from our standpoint, the companies that are doing it, you know, data is centrally important. We, we, we understand what we're doing. We're, we're leveraging modern uh, technologies and platforms out there. Can you bring us back a little bit, you know, two and a half years ago, I'm sure you're rapidly going through a whole bunch of changes, but you know, what, what's the mandate? What are some of the key important pieces uh, along that journey? Yeah, that's a great point because uh, I, I do think digital transformation, unfortunately, is a, is a little bit overused and, and like most technology waves can be hyped. Um, you know, but the reality is for us at Humana is that, you know, our heart truly desires to reach our customers in new and better ways, is to meet their needs, not only that we know they have today, but to anticipate and forecast what those needs are going to be tomorrow and start building those solutions today for what we know they're going to need in the near future. So one of the challenges that I saw when I came to the company a couple of years ago was just the quality and the speed and ability to react to uh, new opportunities and unforeseen uh, circumstances and challenges is that ability to move very quickly. To me, that's one of the keys to digital transformation is that outcome is speed and quality. Well, you know, Bruce, absolutely. Uh, you know, when 2020 hit, uh, the, the, the commentary we had is those, those companies that have already gone down this journey, as you say, uh, agility, being able to react really fast, are happy that they've done it. And anybody that hadn't gone, really started down or gone fast, were like, oh my gosh, I need to get there fast because obviously 2020 brought a lot of new challenges in place. I, I want to hold off one minute longer uh, before talking about the specific <laughs> 2020 challenges, um, because you've got a great story there, but uh, OutSystems, uh, you've, you've been a partner with them, you spoke last year at, at the conference. Why don't you bring us back as to how they first got involved and you know, what was the plan uh, pre-2020? <laughs> yeah, so it's, it, my journey has been interesting. I've been a partner of OutSystems for about six years now, actually. And uh, one of the reasons I came to Humana was the opportunity to introduce the company to a new way, to this low code concept. I had used uh, OutSystems to start a couple of companies prior to Humana. And uh, about 18 months ago, we actually signed our first contract at Humana with OutSystems. So, you know, what we really are enjoying now is this new opportunity to move quickly, uh, to build things differently and to respond to those, like I said, those opportunities that we maybe didn't have before. So that's my journey with OutSystems. It didn't start with Humana, but uh, I've really enjoyed working with them over the last six years. Well, it, it, as you said, that ability to react fast is something that's been the promise of, of platforms, of clouds and the like. Well, 2020, 20, you need to react fast. So Bruce, uh, enough setup, I guess. Why don't you tell us uh, how COVID-19 
uh, the impact, uh, what you, your, you and your team needed to do uh, to kind of move fast and, and get to what uh, the, the internal as well as uh, external customers uh, were going to need. Yeah, thanks for the intro. Uh, you know, it really, uh, let me take you back just a little bit to 2019. So in 2019, we realized that one of our top five interactions that our customers do is they come to our websites and our, and our apps looking for a doctor uh, or looking for a hospital or a clinic or a pharmacy, an eye doctor, a dentist, et cetera. It's one of the top five interactions on our site. And what we realized is that it was a very disjointed experience. It had been grown up over years, not uncommon to most you know, Fortune 50 companies, uh, and it was a silo. If you wanted to find a medical doctor, it was different than if you wanted to find a vision doctor. And it was different if you wanted to find a pharmacy, et cetera. Uh, so not only was it a different experience for customers, but there were different technical solutions. And the cost of maintaining those disparate solutions uh, was really prohibitive to us innovating. So I set forth a strategy since I was the, uh, the business owner of one of these, this capability of uh, finding a doctor I set the roadmap and said, we're going to unify them all. So that was our original challenge, is to unify all of these finders into a single provider finder. Well, that was going great. And right about the end of February, we had a pharmacy finder was the first one. And then COVID hit in March. And thank goodness it did, because it hit then, because we were ready to respond to one of the most important things our customers asked for. And that is, help me find a place to get a COVID-19 test. We had a giant spreadsheet that the call center was trying to maintain and manage and answer those calls as they would come in and say, hey, uh, help me find a location to get a test. Well, if you know anything about COVID testing, it changes constantly. The testing locations change constantly. The type of tests they have, the supplies that they have, the hours of operations. So it was a daunting task to say the least. So that's when I stood up and said, hey, can we volunteer? Can we gather a bunch of volunteers to quickly build some solutions that will help not only the call center, but to help our customers uh, serve themselves? So that's really where this COVID-19 test location came from. It was, it was out of the genesis of what we had started doing on the provider finder space. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, Bruce. I, I know uh, you gave a presentation here at the event, kind of walk through what you had to build. But uh, if you were to look at it, how long did it take to build the COVID test finder? And you know, you've got lots of experience without systems. If if you had not already started on this back in 2019, if you had just said, "Okay, I, I've got a spreadsheet. I need to bring in a technology." If I started from scratch, how how much longer do you think it would have taken uh, for your team to be able to react to uh, d deploy this new solution? Yeah, that's a great question. And one of the key uh, victories I think we had is, you know, honestly, the, the first challenge that I mentioned, the spreadsheet, we solved that spreadsheet problem in a weekend. So I, I pulled together some volunteers. I was one of them. And we actually built the replacement for the spreadsheet in a weekend. So that was pretty astounding. The, the, so the call center was grateful for that. And they quickly had a, a very you know, unique solution there. But that was really just the, the touching point. Where we then took it to is building on top of this unified provider finder. We said, well, you know what? The COVID-19 testing locations are, in a sense, just another type of provider. So with that perspective, we started building a full back office suite where we had a team of 30 to 40 analysts constantly looking across the United States and validating testing location information, hours of operation, calling them making sure that they're accurate, and then importing all the information into the centralized database that was in, uh, in out systems. Um, and then we quickly were able to build a customer experience where they could self-serve. Customers could go out there, do a search, find a testing location themselves. Um, I'd say timeline, we spent about a month building uh, the back office and then deploying out the first version to our customers as well. Uh, very, very rapid, uh, very high quality. Uh, and what we've taken it further even since that first month, uh, we're just now actually building it into and integrating it with a health bot that we have developed in parallel separately. Uh, but it just illustrates the agility that we've had, the flexibility to be able to take a, a solution that started out as, hey, I want to find a doctor to quickly morph to help me find a test location for COVID-19. 
Yeah, it, 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 it's amazing, Bruce. I think back in my career, you know, very early in my career, how long it would take to, you know, build a schema, build out a database, and populate all the data, uh, and how many interns you need to do that, to uh, the websites, to now the, the, that modern app deployment. Um, so 30 days, you know, that, that's phenomenal from kind of full end to end, and obviously you still have some resources keeping things up to date. Do, do you have a rough swag if, if you didn't, hadn't already been using out systems, would this have been, you know, two, three months, or um, is, is getting from, from the ground up, how long does that take? Yeah, great question. You know, overall, uh, it, so the short answer is probably would have took us about four months using traditional methods. Uh, so instead of four months, about a month. And that's pretty consistent what is what we've seen with all of the apps that we've built so far without systems. Uh, we're seeing about four times the value. Uh, I, I like to say 4x value, and that being, you know, a quarter of the cost, a quarter of the time, and we typically will over deliver on scope. Uh, there's, it's not too often you can say that, you know, we, we made it, you know, on budget, on time, uh, but we over delivered scope. Uh, but, uh, but generally speaking, we're seeing about 4x value. Uh, now, I, I would say coincidentally, when I was doing the startups I mentioned earlier, I would see up to 10x value. Uh, compared to traditional hand coding and you know large development teams in the startup environment, so smaller companies I think should expect to see even better than forex. Well, that, 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 that's great, um, Bruce. Since you have such a long history without systems, I, I'd love to get your your take on uh, some of the enhancements. As uh, you, you look at, um, it's it's not just a platform, but they're helping give uh, guidance to build faster. Uh, there's really uh, you know AI. Uh, being built in, you know, what have you seen over the years? What's exciting you uh, these days? Anything else that you're kind of asking for uh, that that maybe we should be looking for down on the roadmap? Yeah, you know, that's one of the greatest things I, I really enjoy about the OutSystems partnership is uh, their level of investment in the platform, and they're like like I'm constantly trying to think forward in healthcare. What are our customers going to need tomorrow? Uh, OutSystems is doing the same, saying, Hey, what is Bruce going to need? to drive his digital business forward in the future. So two big things really come to mind. Number one is mobile. Uh, when version 10 was launched, uh, you know, I started on version nine. When version 10 was launched, it was, it was lights out when it came to mobile. It was an absolute game changer. For the first time, I didn't have to have a you know, large iOS and Android team and a web team and a back office team. So I, typically I'd have four different teams when those specialties um, didn't need that anymore. Uh, we could do full stack now uh, with just about any any developer. So that was huge. The second huge innovation is, uh, I would say the AI you mentioned, is that now that the new um, developer productivity that you see embedded in the app, the suggestions, the it's it's almost like the, the platform anticipates what developers need next in their daily tasks. Uh, so I know that's been a, a big help. Um, then I think the, the the last thing that I'm looking forward to uh, that I know they're working on you know, feverishly is is really bringing it more to even a wider audience of citizen developers, so designers. Uh, we've got a few use cases where our marketing uh, team has worked with us, and some of their marketers and designers that aren't developers at all saw us building things, and they said, "Hey, you know, what? after the first couple of apps they designed with us, they said." I, I think we can do this ourselves for some you know, basic things. So they did, they started building some basic things. So I'm really looking forward to that uh, push out towards you know, more business folks even further than what they've already done before. Yeah, but Bruce, it's such a good point. Something I, I've seen in the, in the serverless community really enabling, uh, as I said, back in the early days, it was programming. You wrote lines of code. Coding uh, was you, you, you pulled pieces. Uh, the, the discussion of low code is trying to make it even simpler. Uh, and with, with more modern platforms, more modern tools, as you said, it can anticipate things. You don't need to, you can even have uh, that citizens developer, as you said, um, go out there. So uh, Bruce, I want to give you the final word, just uh, you know, value you've seen. You've been part of the OutSystems. Uh, events in the past. Uh, what do you enjoy talking to your peers about, sharing your story? Uh, what, what, what are the things that um, you, you want to make sure that people, if they're coming to virtual, uh, and maybe it's their first time, understand about shows like Next Step? Yeah, Next Step is just a fantastic event. It's like I always said it on my calendar, never miss it. 
Um, disappointed I won't be able to sit and have a meal with some of the folks in person, but we'll get to it next year. Uh, but no, I, I'd say, you know, the sessions, of course, you know, my session, I was you know, excited to, to share, you know, more detail uh, on, on how we went about creating this COVID-19 and this universal finder. So there's tons and tons and tons of sessions just like those to great, get great insights uh, and to make new contacts as well. So I would encourage folks to, you know, pick me up on Twitter, pick me up on LinkedIn uh, and others and, you know, network. Because when it comes down to it, we're all innovators and we're all trying to solve the needs of the communities that we serve. And I believe we're better together. So thanks for having, the, having me. Well, Bruce, we love being able to share those stories. Thank you so much for uh, what you were able to do, such a valuable, important thing uh, to the community as a whole. And thank you for sharing your story on theCUBE. Great, thanks again for having me. Thanks, Stu. Stay with us for lots more coverage from OutSystems Next Step. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.